that farther to the west this morning, Alex. In fact, getting some snow reports in for areas over in Nebraska up to an inch already accumulated for some spots. And again, we are seeing some of that moderate to heavy snowfall this morning already moving in for some of those counties in southwest Iowa. I'll give you a look at those here. Let's see if we can pull them up. We're seeing some spots like Creston, Red Oak, Clorinda experiencing some of that heavier snowfall. If you're waking up in Adams or Taylor County, you are also going to be experiencing some of this right now, and it's going to continue to push a little bit farther to the east as we continue the rest of this morning. We mentioned just a few moments ago about visibility. Here's the difference between where we're seeing some of that heavy snowfall down to just a half mile of visibility and what we've still got in central Iowa, those nice clear skies, but we can expect similar conditions as we continue through the rest of today. Right now, though, like you just said, things are looking pretty nice out there. Temperatures right around 11 degrees, but it is going to feel a bit cooler than that. We are still working with some of those wind chill values that will continue to play a factor in today's forecast as well as along into the start of next week. Again, the key times that you want to be most aware for for that moderate to heavy snowfall is going to be late morning into the afternoon. We'll still be working with it into the early evening, but a lot of this could be transitioning over to freezing rain as well. So we're keeping our eyes on those conditions as we head through the rest of today. We'll go ahead and take a look at that snow tracker. I've adjusted some of these numbers, brought a few up around central Iowa. It's looking more like five inches is kind of that new good number, that average that we're seeing and continuing to see as more of these uh, models come in, in with more of that data for us. So again, expecting to see a good amount of snowfall over a short period of time. That reduced visibility does continue to stay an issue as we head into the afternoon. Plus, we're talking about ice accumulation being a problem for us up to a tenth of an inch for most spots, but down to the southeast, we could see some higher amounts and we're going to continue to deal with that wind as well. Going hour by hour, you can see that snow blanketing the state, much of it at least, except for the northeast as we head into the 11 o'clock hours. Pay attention to those winds up towards Spencer, Algona, Mason City. They continue to pick up. We are going to be talking about near blizzard conditions, but that's expected to be the case as we head into Saturday as well. As this system clears, those winds continue to pick up there, and that has already resulted in some changes in those watches and warnings we've been telling you about. Matinka, tell us about this blizzard warning that is in place. There's a blizzard warning in northwest Iowa right along the Algona, back through Rockwell City and the Humboldt area and to the northwest for the light, fluffy snow and the extreme wind coming in is going to be creating wide out conditions that occurs tonight and tomorrow. So your Saturday forecast remains in the red here. We're still going to be under that winter storm warning for central Iowa with a blizzard warning to the north. Notice what happens here early on in the day. We drop about 10 degrees here in just a few hours time. That will lead to a flash freeze and a big crust over the top of the snow that's already out there with those very strong winds expected to build in. This afternoon, the winds will be strong out of the south. Tomorrow, they come back in from the northwest and get even stronger with winds gusting close to 50 miles per hour at times across the northern part of the state. That's going to drive that feels like temperature down toward 20 to 25 degrees below zero Saturday evening, and it gets even even worse as we wake up Sunday morning, wind chills north of Highway 20 will likely be in the 30s below zero. And that trend does continue as we head into the start of next week as well. Look at those sub zero overnight lows. You can only imagine what those wind chill values are going to feel like. So don't put away those layers just yet. Even though driving conditions will improve a bit, things will be icy too because we're not going to get a lot of melting done. And by the time we hypothetically would, when temperatures come back up heading into the middle of next week, we're already expecting that next system. Now, of course, we'll have eyes on once we get closer, but we just want to get you through the next couple of days. So stay with us as we continue to track these conditions.